Hello, I'm Fred Sokolow, and this is a lesson on understanding chord progressions. You know, a chord progression is the sequence of chords in a song, and chord progressions aren't just random. Well, sometimes they are, but usually they're not. And they, there's various patterns that they follow, and uh, there's no rules in music, but there are conventions. There are things that people often do. So once you get hip to and understand some of the common patterns that are used, it becomes way easier to learn new tunes, for one thing, and, and when you understand a tune that way and you understand the chord progression, you can play it in any key. You're not stuck to just one key. So we're going to be looking at all kinds of music theory and trying to make it understandable. I, under, I know that music theory is usually taught in a way that goes right over people's heads. So I'll try to keep this down to earth. Uh, let's start by getting in tune together. So here's the high G, the fourth string, and the third string C, and the second string E, and then the first string the high A. There's no getting around it now. It's time to talk about the dreaded circle of fifths. I say dreaded circle of fifths because you've probably seen this many times and you've probably had people attempt to explain it to you many times and it just went whoosh right over your head. And I don't blame you for that because most people are really bad at explaining this stuff. Um, I have an advantage over some people because I didn't learn music academically. I didn't go to music school or have teachers that taught me all this, all the math of music. Instead, I learned it uh, just by playing with different people and listening to recordings and playing along with them and sort of figuring it out for myself. So I have a very practical uh, understanding of it. And I'm going to try to communicate this or what the Circle of Fifths is for to you and what it means and what it's all about. So you've got a diagram of the Circle of Fifths in your written material. So take it out and look at it while I'm explaining about this, okay? If you look at it, you'll see that on the outside of the circle, there's 12 tones. There's all, tw all 12 notes. You know, there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but if you count the sharps and flats in between them, there's 12 tones. And you know, sharps and flats are kind of redundant, like G sharp is the same note as A flat, right? It's one fret higher than a G, and A flat is one fret lower than an A. So they're really the same note. So there's 12 tones, and those are the 12 tones that are used in, in, in our European uh, system of music, which is, uh, you know, what our system of music basically is, is the European system. And I don't know why 12 is such an important number in our culture, but it is. If you think about it, there's 12 hours in a day, 12 months in a year, uh, what else, 12 apostles or disciples, 12 signs in the zodiac, 12 donuts in a dozen. I think I left a few out. There's a bunch of 12s in our culture, and there's these 12 tones. Now, if you look at them on the circle, you'll see that they're not in alphabetical order. They're in some other kind of order. And as it indicates there, when you go clockwise, you're going up a fourth. There's a C at the top of the circle, and when you go clockwise, like from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, you're going to F. I'm sorry, to G, because G is the fifth note in the C major scale. G is the five chord in the key of C. C is one and G is five. If you go clockwise one step from G, you're going up a fifth from G, which is D. D is the fifth note in the G major scale. And uh, so D is the five chord if you're in the key of G. And if you're in the key of D and you go clockwise one step, you're going to A because A is the fifth note in the D major scale and so on. If you were sitting here in front of me and could answer me, I'd say, okay, do you get that so far? Um, and if you go in the other direction, counterclockwise, you're going up by fourths. So start with a C at the top of the circle. When you go counterclockwise one step, you go to F. F is the fourth note in the C major scale. If you're in the key of C, F is the four chord. If you're in the key of F, B flat, counterclockwise one step, is the four chord in the key of F. Now, as I mentioned before, you, you know a lot of these one, four, and five things. You, you know that they're the most common chords to use in whatever key you're in because you've played so many songs that use one, four, and five. But one of the cool things you're, you may notice about the circle of fifths 
is that it, it, it's an illustration of these 1, 4, 5 chord families. Because if you look at the C, you've got the F, the 4 chord on one side, and the G, the 5 chord on the other side. There's one, and if you look at the G, you've got the D on one side and the C on the other side, the 5 chord and the 4 chord. So if you look at the E, you've got the B on one side, that's the 5 chord, and the A on the other side, that's the 4 chord. So you've got all these chord families, and those minor chords on the inside of the circle, you guessed it, those are the relative minors. Looking at C, A minor is right underneath it, that's the relative minor of C. Then you go to the 4 chord F and look at what's right underneath of that, the D minor, the relative minor of that, of F. And then you look at the G and the relative minor E is right, E minor is right underneath it. So <clears throat> one cool thing about the circle is that it divides the uh, notes up into the, it, it illustrates the, you know, the, the immediate chord families, 1, 4, 5, plus the relative minors, which is really handy. And it's, it's really cool, but it's not even the main reason why we're looking at the circle of fifths by a long shot. But it is a good enough reason to get the circle of fifths tattooed on your wrist right here so you can look down at it while you're playing and you know what, whatever key you're in, you know what the four chord or the five chord is and you know what the relative minors are. And for that purpose, I actually made these little decals that you can, you know, fake tattoos that you put on here. But then if you take a shower once or twice, they wash off. So it's just for fun. On the other hand, I created these stick-on things that you put on your uke, and it sticks to any shiny surface like a window cling, and it's got the circle of fifths on there with all the, you know, the relative minors, the whole bit. And that's a really handy thing to have. And you can get it on my, on my website, which is, talks about in the written material there. And I mentioned the tattoo thing to James Hill, who's that great Canadian uke guy, and he said, yeah, that would be a great way of making sure that you never learned the thing. I guess he's got a point. But, but uh, let's get to the real reason why you uh, are looking at the circle of fifths. Well, one, before we do, one other thing about it is that you can use the circle of fifths to change keys, to transpose a song from one key to another. For example, say you're looking at a Paul Simon songbook, and it's got a, one of your favorite songs in the key of E flat. Okay, well, E flat is not a super friendly key for the uke. It's going to involve a lot of, uh, you know, uh, movable chords, harder to play chords. So, say you want to play it in an easy chord, like an easy key, like C. Well, you look at the E flat, and you see that the second chord in the song is A flat, and that's one step counterclockwise on the circle. Well, then you're going to, from C, you're going to go one step counterclockwise in the circle to F instead of E flat. So you can look at all the chords in the tune and what the relationship is to the one chord, the E flat, and make them have the same relationship in C. You can rewrite it, and, and that's called transposing, changing the song to a different key. You can use the circle like that. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, but once again, it's not the main reason why this thing is so important. The reason why the circle of fifths is looked at, and the reason we're looking at it, is because so many songs have circle of fifths type of chord movement. So what does that mean? It means that you, say you're in the key of C, you leave the immediate chord family, and you go somewhere else, like to A, or A7, or E, or B, somewhere far away from the immediate chord family. Say you went to B, then how do you get back to C? Because I remember we talked about how you cause tension when you leave the chord, and then you want to get eventually back to the one chord. So you just go along the circle. You go from B, you go up a fourth to E, up a fourth to A, up another fourth to D, up another fourth to G, and another fourth takes you back home to C. And let me do that again slower. You went from C, let's say it's all seventh chords. You went from C to B seventh. The fourth, up a fourth, you know, going counterclockwise takes you to E7th, because E is the fourth note in the B scale. Then from E7th, one step more on the circle takes you to A7th, then a fourth above E, then to D7th, a fourth above A, then to G7th, and then finally up a fourth takes you home to C, where you wanted to get all along. Let's do this with a song. Taking, looking at your Looking at your uh, circle of fifths, we're going to start on C. We're going to do that song from the 50s, Mr. Sandman, which a lot of people know. And it's, it jumps right to the B7th chord, which is kind of a random jump from C to B7. Mr. Sandman to B7th, bring me a 
a dream. Now you're on the circle. You go up a fourth to E7. Make her complexion. Like up a fourth to E7. Up a fourth to D7. Up a fourth to G7. And then up a fourth in your home. Tell me that my lonely nights are over. There was a little turnaround there to the five chord. Mr. Sandman is one of those um, 32 bar tunes I talked about. That was the first 16 bars that we just did. It starts over, Mr. Sandman, I'm so alone, just want somebody to call my own. And that was the same progression, C to B7, to E7, to A7, then the last eight bars are something different. And then, and that's what I told you happens so much in those 32 bar tunes. But most of the song was all about that little, uh, trip around half of the circle, almost half of the circle, going from B7 to up 4th to E to A to D to G, back to C. And that's typical. Most of the song is that uh, circle of fifths chord movement. There's a bluegrass song called Salty Dog that's all circle of fifths movement. It goes, I'm standing on the corner with the low down blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. That's the whole tune. And it goes, C. A7 to D7, then G7 takes you back to C, and and uh, like I said, that's the whole tune. Very popular bluegrass tune. Every bluegrass band knows "Salty Dog." There's there's another one called "Don't Let Your Deal Go Down," a song about card games. That's uh, kind of the same thing. It goes, "Don't let your deal go down." Never let your deal go down. Just repeats that you know, over and over again, that little sequence. Um, when, we, when we did uh, Be My Baby before, let's go back and revisit Be My Baby. We'll do it in, in F. So remember I told you it started with the rhythm changes. It's that 1, 6 minor, 2 minor, 5. Now look at your circle and you'll see that if you're going from F, you go around the circle to D, okay? except we'll play a D minor instead of a D. Then we'll go up a fourth to G and play a minor, and then up a fourth to C, and then up another fourth takes us back to F. That's the one, six, two, five progression. One, six, minor, two, minor, five. It's a circle of fifths progression as well. That's the, so the, um, what I'm telling you is that the rhythm changes is a circle of fifths progression. Because as you're going along the circle, they could be minor chords or seventh chords. It could be either one. It's kind of the, melody of the song that dictates which it's going to be because some minor chords will clash with the melody some major chords will clash or seventh chords so so going from uh from f to d minor to g minor to c7 that's the night we met i knew i needed you so and then repeats that now that i found you i won't you go so we did the rhythm changes twice now it's going to go somewhere else it's going to jump to a seventh and you're going to go along the circle again but this time with all seventh chords a seventh da 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 d seventh up a fourth da 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 g seventh i'll always will adore you up a fourth to c or c seventh to it so won't you and then the chorus is just the one six minor two minor five again the rhythm changes be my So, backing up, you could say that Be My Baby is all circle of fifths movement. Most of it is the rhythm changes, one, six minor, two minor, five, and then it has that one little middle part that goes around the circle with seventh chords. And if you look at it, we're in F and we jumped to A seventh. What is A to, the, to F? Well, it's the third note. A is the third note in the F scale. A is the three chord. So we went, so Salty Dog was a one and then six, two, five, one. This one, that, that part of, um, that part of Be My Baby was three, six, two, five, one. And if you're aware of these numbers and what they mean, you'll start seeing the patterns repeat over and over in other songs. Let's go back to the six, two, five, one for a minute. Um, here's, a, here's a little progression in C. I don't want her, you can have her. I'd 
rather be alone. I don't want her, you could have her. I'm better off on my own, sitting by the phone, waiting for a call. I'd rather know that she isn't coming back at all. I don't want her, you could have her. I'm better off alone. Okay, so that was a little bluesy chord progression that imitates um, the chord progression that every 30s finger-picking blues guitar player used to do. Um, Robert Johnson did Hot Tamales and They're Red Hot. Uh, there was a western swing song that was called Bring It On Down to My House Honey. It was the exact same chord progression. It's the progression that Arlo Guthrie was imitating when he did Alice's Restaurant. Same chords, but you know he wrote new words and new melody to it. But it's a real popular progression and it's one, six, two, five, one, and it repeats that, and then it has that little middle section that does something different. But uh, those are all seventh chords, the six and the two and the five. So that's another one, six, two, five kind of chord progression, another circle of fifths progression.